this eyeball and if you see in this eyeball there is a line which is this is the iris plane that is a pupil right this is the pupil over here this line is going and touching the center of the pupil this line which is bisecting the center of the pupil is known as a pupillary axis and see this is the optic disc this is the fovea fovea is always on the temporal side and you see from if you want to see any object in visual pathway i told you if you want to see any object the light has to go and goes to the retina and the most important point in retina is fovea so the line from the object if there is a object somewhere over here the line which is joining the object to the fovea is the visual axis the line which is joining the object to the fovea of the patient that is a visual axis and this visual axis passes through a point which is known as a nodal point of eye a nodal point of eye is just at the posterior border of lens that is a theoretical point you don't see it but at the posterior lens there is a point that is a nodal point that any object if you want to see any pen in one eye if you are fixating at the pen the light is coming from the pen going through the nodal point and go to the fovea that is a visual axis so you see there is a angle now which is formed between the pupillary axis and the visual axis this angle is known as a kappa angle k kappa angle is the angle between the pupillary axis and the visual axis so what happens if i throw a light any torch light in a patient's eye when you throw light in the patient's eye what you see you see a reflex in the patient's eye that's a corneal reflex if you see over here the arrow is also marked you see a reflex in the patient's eye that is a corneal reflex in both eyes it is seen and this reflex is because of the visual axis because the patient is focusing on the object on the torch so this two white dots that is the corneal reflex is due to the visual axis and now if you see that there is a an angle between the pupillary and the visual axis and if this is the right eye see this is temporal this is nasal that's why fovea is on the temporal side correct so just concentrate over here if this is the right eye this is the pupillary axis this is the visual axis the visual axis is slightly nasal they are cutting at the cornea slightly nasal slightly nasal to the pupillary axis that's why the reflex is slightly nasal in a normal patient theoretically of course it is slightly nasal in of course you see in normal patients the reflex is center but theoretically it is slightly nasal why because there is a angle kappa angle between the pupillary axis and the visual axis so if someone asks you the corneal reflex is exactly theoretically where it is slightly nasal why because there is a angle between the pupillary axis and the visual axis and that axis that angle is known as a kappa angle now this kappa angle normal normal kappa angle is about 5 degrees and it is slightly nasal and in squint you can tell in degrees also and you can tell in prism diopters also and what is the relation 1 degree equal to 2 prism diopters pd is prism diopters so kappa angle is normally 5 degrees or 10 prism diopters and it is taken as a positive value it is taken as a positive value of the kappa angle that is a normal in children the kappa angle is slightly bigger theoretically in children in normal orthotropics i am talking about the kappa angle is about 10 degrees or 20 prism diopters that is just theoretically now let us go <clears throat> one step further let us go one step further and let us see this again the same thing which i have shown you already this is the visual axis and there's the pupillary axis now what happens this is the okay this is the visual axis now if the fovea you are seeing the visual axis from the fovea now see very carefully if the fovea goes a little bit more of temporal see if the fovea goes a little bit more temporal means there is a temporal dragging there is a temporal dragging of the fovea this reflex will be seen more nasal 
or more temporal. If the fovea is going temporal, there is a temporal dragging of the fovea. This reflex on the cornea will be seen slightly more nasal. Means there is increase in the kappa angle. What I am talking about? If this kappa angle is more than 5 degrees, like in cases of temporal dragging of fovea, that can happen. If the patient has a uh, toxocara scar, can happen in retinopathy of prematurity, can happen in some albinism patients. What will happen? You will see the reflex. You will see the reflex slightly nasal in the cornea. Means the kappa angle is slightly increased. And if you see the reflex slightly nasal, it will give an appearance. If you see this picture, in this both reflex are almost in the center. Or you can say slightly nasal because normal. But if the reflex is seen slightly nasal, it will appear that the eyeball is going outside. Like this. This is the normal. The above one is a normal. Here you can see the reflex is slightly nasal. It appears that the eyeball is going outside. And outside deviation is known as exo. But actually the eye is not going exo. It is appearing to go exo. It means kappa angle more than 5 degree will tell you that the patient is having a pseudo means false exotropia condition. Seen in these conditions like temporal dragging of the fovea in toxocara, ROP, retinopathy of prematurity or albinism. All right. And in those conditions in which there is a increase in the intercanthal distance due to bone that is known as hyperterrorism. In that condition also it will be seen that the eyeball is going outside. It appears that the eyeball is going outside. That is known as hyperterrorism. So hyperterrorism also example of pseudo exotropy. Yes, good Kirti and Sonali. Nice. Now let us go one step further. So temporal dragging of the macula will appear that the eye, that the reflex is slightly nasal. If the reflex is nasal, it will appear to the to the doctor that the eyeball is slightly outside. That is pseudo exotropia. That is like this picture. Let us go one step more further. Let us go one step more further. This was your uh, visual axis. Now, if there is a nasal shifting, if there is a nasal shifting of the fovea, see what happens. Is this the nasal shifting of the fovea means towards the optic disc. It will appear that the reflex is now slightly temporal. That will give an appearance of. So in cases of nasal shifting of fovea, that will give an appearance of that the reflex is slightly more temporal. And that will tell you that the, that will appear to the doctor that the eyeball is having pseudo isotropia. If the reflex is temporal, it will give an appearance to the doctor that the eyeball is going inside that is pseudo isotropia. And this nasal shifting of fovea can be seen in high myopes. Also, if you can see, sorry, okay. Also, if you can see this picture, this is the normal. In this, the reflex are slightly nasal. Why? Because here the intercanthal distance is increased, that is known as telecanthus condition. So telecanthus condition or if the patient has a epicanthal fold in eyelids I told you if there is an epicanthal fold if there is a prominent epicanthal fold or telecanthus that will also appear that the eyeball is going inside like you see in this picture it appears that the eyeball is going inside but see the reflex is like is almost in the center that is epicanthal fold. So examples of pseudo isotropia are epicanthal fold.
telecanthus. Nasal shifting of the fovea, the reflex will be seen slightly temporal. If the reflex is seen slightly temporal, it means the doctor will see the eyeball to be shifted slightly inside. Inside means esotropia, but actually the eyeball is not going inside, it appears, so that is pseudo-esotropia. Uh, 